Might be better if I turn it on. There we go. Good morning. All right. So we have um, some people going on a mission trip here this next week. And so I want to just take a minute to pray for Pat and Dave Rollinson, our, some of our elders and pastors here. Would you guys come on up? We're going to pray for you guys. Isn't it amazing that we have a church that believes in reaching other people? <laughs> we are a missional church. And so these two are going with their daughter's ballet company, Light of the World. You guys can come up here. And um, they are going to Honduras. When do you guys leave? What day do you leave? What day do you leave? Monday. Monday. All right. 3.30 a.m. All right. So they're leaving Monday. Um, so tomorrow, 3.30 in the morning. You guys better get to bed soon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, can you stretch your hands out to this couple? These guys are amazing. They've been serving in this church for many, many decades, and uh, they, they are elders in this place. They were elders back when this place was built, and um, they've just, uh, just been amazing pillars. And now uh, they're seeing the next generation of young people just going out and the, making a difference all through the world with their daughter and their Light of the World Ballet Company, and uh, God has used that all over the world, to China, Israel, all... Uh, and now Honduras this t tomorrow yeah. morning tomorrow at 3 3.30. <laughs> Come on, stretch your hands out again, and let's pray for these guys. God, we just thank you so much for Dave and Pat. God, we are so grateful, God, for pillars in this house like them. God, and how they have served here for many, many years, just blessing this place, God, with their time and effort and, God, their resources. God, they've just sowed and sowed and sowed. And because of them, we are here today, and we're so grateful for them. And, God, here they are still sowing and going off to another country, God, with their daughter and that whole ministry with many, many young people that are going to be sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through, through dance. And God, we're so grateful. God, we pray that your hand will be upon them, that you would bless them, that you'd protect them, God, that you would anoint them. Would you give them words of wisdom and prophetic words? God, we pray for a spirit of evangelism upon them, that many, many, many people would come to know you as their personal Lord and Savior because of what they're going to be doing starting tomorrow morning at 3.30. <laughs> God, we thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God bless you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right. We are in our week two of our series on legacy. Uh, last week, we talked about how that uh, without a vision, we run aimlessly, right? Or like the great... Yogi Berra said, without, um, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. And we don't want to do that, right? We want to end up somewhere. And thankfully, God has given, given us a purpose, a reason, a vision. We don't have to run aimlessly, or like the Bible says, a man beating the air. You know, some of you watched the MMA fights last night, and uh, it'd be really, you know, kind of silly if just somebody was just boxing against nobody. You know, but God has given us purpose, he's given us vision, he's given us uh, a, a place to go, a place, to, uh, a thing, to, uh, something to do, something uh, that means something. And today, I want to talk about that it's time. It's time to do something that matters. Now, I don't know about you, uh, but I have done a lot of things in my lifetime that don't really matter. Right, so I remember one time golfing with my good friend, and he, was, he could hit the ball so far, right? And I would get jealous because he, 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 I use my driver, and you know, once in a while I'll get lucky if I can even get close to 300 yards. And he would take, he wouldn't even use his driver, he'd use like a five wood or something uh, for those of you that play golf. And he would hit this thing 320, 330 as if it was nothing. But one time he got up, we were in a league together, and he got up and he hit this ball. And he hit it so high and so far and so long, but in such the wrong direction. <laughs> and I remember that thing just going over the woods and still going over the woods. And he goes, well, at least that has no eternal significance. <laughs> I just always remember that statement, you know, it's like, yeah, that, thank God, because that, got, that ball is gone. Nobody's finding that ball. And so uh, we have all done things that have wasted time, wasted money, 
right? All kind of things that, uh, just for example, right? Have, has anybody ever said to you, oh, I just watched this movie. It's so good. It's like the best movie I've ever seen. Sometimes my sister will do this to me. She's like, this movie is so good. You've got to see this movie. And so I'm like really hopeful and really excited that, oh, this movie's gonna be really good. And then I, I'm in the movie and like halfway through the movie, I'm like, I hope it gets better. <laughs> right, you, anybody know what I'm talking about? And then like a little bit later on, like by the end of the movie, you're like, I cannot believe that I just lost two hours of my life. I will never get those, those minutes back again. This wasted, right? Has anybody wasted time? Anybody wasted time, right? How about money, right? I love, like, you're going to laugh at this one, but, like, I love, like, the infomercials about pots and pans, right? It's just a thing. Like, I hate sticky pans, you know? Can I just cook an egg without it sticking? Like, really? And so one time I saw this infomercial, and they're like, it does not stick. I was like, I've got to get those pans, you know? They're like gold, like, looking, you know, like, they must be, like, they must really work because on the commercial, it's like every time they did it, it's like just the egg just falls right off. It just slides. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And so like I ordered those pans. I got those pans in. I have those pans till the day, and they're about to go in the trash because they don't work. I wasted all that money on these pans that are not any better than the cheap ones that I had from Walmart or something. You know what I'm saying? So we have all wasted our time. We've wasted our money. We've wasted our lives on things. And I could go deeper into this, right? There's this thing called uh, social, you know, deaf scrolling. And actually, where people will just get on their phone and just keep scrolling, 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 like TikTok, video after video after video, and just go down this trail and it's been hours. All of a sudden, we realize like, whoa, I can't believe, what time is it that I just wasted all this time just doing nonsense that makes no difference, nothing mattered, and now uh, it's even caused, even uh, statistics, some statistics show that, the, uh, that this causes a lot of mental health issues and depression. How about those people that traveled from uh, different countries to come see a total solar eclipse only to get here and they can't see it because it's too cloudy? <laughs> Could you imagine that? Like there's people that came from Australia. Yeah, for real, that came to upstate New York from Australia and it was cloudy. Like, could you imagine the time and the money? They were planning from over a year ago to come here. People, you know, people even from out of state, driving all those trips. And then, oh, we get to see this total solar eclipse. And, oh, where is it? <laughs> you know, it's like, we've all wasted our time. We've all wasted um, our finances, our resources. We've all done things that don't matter. In fact, we probably spend way too much time doing things that don't matter. D.L. Moody says, our greatest fear in life should not be a failure, but as succeeding at something that doesn't matter. Could you imagine this? Think about this for a second. You're doing something, you're succeeding in something that you think is amazing, that's awesome, and that you spend all of your time and all your resources, and you start, start succeeding in whatever that is, only to realize that that thing that you succeeded in and spent all this time and energy and money in doesn't even make a difference. Oof. Jesus said it like this in Matthew chapter 6. He says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Jesus is basically saying in verse 19, stop doing things that don't matter. Stop wasting all your time and effort on things that don't make a difference. He's telling the people in this scripture, his disciples and anyone that would listen, is back then they didn't have really good banking systems like we do today where we could store our money or put money into stock or 401ks and all that. So back then they would store treasure. They would get things like precious stones or uh, gold or materials from all over the world, especially the East, and they would store up different, even like perfumes and different things, and they would, they, that was their wealth. 
and they would store them in this, this, this private room or this place where it was hidden. But the problem with it is, is that thieves could break in and steal and take it. Or vermins could come in and destroy it, or moths could eat away at the materials. And Jesus is saying, don't store for yourselves up treasures on earth where all this uh, could happen, but instead transfer, for, transfer what matters from the things of this world to the things and treasures in heaven. And he's telling us today that that's the transition, that's the transformation that needs to take place in our lives. Instead of doing things that don't matter because they're worldly things, because they won't amount to anything of eternal significance, why don't we start storing up for ourselves treasures in heaven? How can we do that? How can we store up things in, 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 in the heavenlies? How can we do that? We know how to save money, right? Well, some of us. <laughs> some of us, maybe not so much. We know how we could save money if we had we know, we know um, how to put, get a bank account. We know how to buy things. But how do we actually do something uh, to build up our bank account, if you will, or our treasures, if you will, in the heavens? And this is what Jesus is asking us to do, to change our priorities from trying to make things on this earth matter to things that matter for eternal significance, that will matter forever. You know your life is what a, but a blink of an eye. The Bible says you're here today and gone tomorrow like a vapor that vanishes. That's the length of our life. But eternity is forever. And what we do on this side of heaven makes a significant difference for all eternity for each and every single one of us. And Jesus is giving us a clue here, not just here, but all through the scriptures. There's many scriptures on this, that when we live for God, if we live for heaven instead of living for ourselves or for what's the material possessions that we have now, that our lives would be blessed in the bigger picture of things. And we need to, as people of Believer's Chapel, learn how to, instead of making our priorities on earth, make our priorities in heaven. Be eternal-minded, not earthly-minded. And so I ask you today, what are you building in heaven? What are you doing that really is making a difference? What are you doing that matters? I want to give you five things that scripture tells us matter. Five things that you can do that will make a difference. Number one, you ready? Everybody ready? All right, number one. Five things that matter. Number one, our relationship with God matters. Every time that we pray, every time that we read our Bible, every time that we come to church like you are here today or maybe you're watching online, every time we get into this, our lives are being transformed. We are going from what we used to be to what God wants us to be. Every single time that we pray, every single time that we open this word and read it, our lives, our hearts are starting to be transformed. Every time we hear the word of God preached, this word of God, not a false word, but the real word of God preached to us, our lives are slowly being transformed into who we were ought to be. You see, before Christ, we were going in a bad trajectory. Our lives led to what? Death. We were full of darkness. The Bible says we weren't just full of darkness, we were darkness. And when every single time that we pray, every single time that we come and hear the word of God, our lives are being transformed into what God has created us to be. Even you hearing that right now is causing your life, your heart, to be transformed just a little bit more into, oh, I could be more like Jesus. Oh, I can go from what I used to be to what God has intended me to be in the first place before I even sinned. Whoa. Wow. Every time I pray, God, forgive me for this sin that I did, or God, I need more of your life. Instantly, the blood of Jesus comes and washes over us and purifies us, the Bible says, from all unrighteousness. We become more like Christ in that moment. Isn't that amazing? We can't belittle this. This is like, this is one thing that matters in our life. Every single time we pray, 
every single time we read our Bible, every single time we come to church, these things matter. Number two, things that matter, things that we could build in heaven. Number one, our relationship with God matters. Number two, building the kingdom of God matters. Jesus talked about the kingdom of God again and again and again, bringing the kingdom of God. When we pray, obviously, when we read our Bible, we're seeing the kingdom of God come in. But when we actually start to lead, whether we lead a crew or whether we serve on a team, whether we uh, get involved in missions like Pat, Dave and Pat Robinson are tomorrow morning at 3.30, whether we uh, get involved in a kid's ministry or on this worship team or on this thing, we are building the kingdom of God. God said that he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He is building his church and God wants every part, every, every person in this place is a part of this church of God's church, the big C, not just Believer's Chapel, but the whole church. And when our body parts function and we come together and join his body, his church, that is, the Bible talks about, that we are making, we are building the kingdom of God. And what you do matters. It makes a difference. It has eternal significance, unlike my friend's golf shot over the woods. Your, when you serve, when you uh, go on a missions trip, when you go, we had interns and others go to New York City to feed the homeless and do a missions trip to New York City. We have people to go to Syracuse and to work with a rescue mission. And we, we um, have obviously crews, like I already said, and all these different things are building the kingdom of God. When you serve, you are making a difference for eternity. Number one, our relationship with God matters. Number two, Building the kingdom of God matters. Number three, giving matters. It's generosity that builds the kingdom of God. It's your tithing that builds this place. It's your giving that's the reason that these lights are on right now. It's your giving that allows me to be up here preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and see people every week come to know him. It's your giving that supports the staff. It's your giving that allows us to give to missions. Uh, last year, over $100,000 in different places all around the world and this community. It's your giving, your faithful giving, that supports all these things and helps build the kingdom of, God, uh, kingdom of God. And besides it, there's many scriptures that just talk about that when you give, God will take it, use it for his glory. It builds the kingdom. It builds treasures in heaven for your, so to speak, bank account there. Giving matters. Number four, five things, right? Number four, fighting against injustice matters. Fighting against injustice matters. Do you know God's heart bleeds, aches, for those that are hurting, for those that are done wrong. Right now, as I speak, there are people all around this world that don't have anything to eat. Right now, as I speak, there's people all around this world, kids even, being exploited. And God does not want it. And when we as a church come together and fight against those things like poverty or child exploitation or uh, any kind of injustice, even what we're talking about, the mental health crisis that's going on right now in our society, when we stand up and do something about it, God gets involved and it matters. It matters for those people, it matters for the kingdom of God, and it matters for your bank account in heaven, for the treasures in heaven. Last but not least, things that matter, this is definitely not least to me. Souls matter. Every single time that we plant a seed, that we share the good news of what Jesus has done for somebody, every time that that grows and somebody responds to the good news of what Jesus Christ has done for them, that person is brought from a trajectory of damnation 
into light into the kingdom of God for eternity. To me and to God, there is no greater thing than we could do than to see people come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. I want you just to think about this. Think about if you didn't have the opportunity to hear about Jesus. Think about if you never had one sin forgiven. Think about it if nobody took the time to witness to you, to share Jesus with you. Think about if you never had the opportunity to get your life right with your creator. Man, aren't you so thankful that somebody did something that mattered because you matter. You matter. You matter to that person that told you, and you matter to God who used that person. Now, whether it was a parent, a relative, a pastor, a church service, a Billy Graham service, Heaven's Gates House Flame, whatever it was, it worked. And you're here today because somebody else led you to Jesus Christ. And because they did something that matters, now you will have eternal life with Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever, right? Amen? Are you grateful for that? Yes. Now think about this. Shouldn't we do the same? Shouldn't we love people enough to overcome the fear we might have or what they might think about us? Or overcome the fear of being politi politically incorrect to tell them that, hey, there's a better way that Jesus really does want a relationship with you? Or should we just, like, hide? <laughs> hide behind our Bibles. When you share the good news of Jesus Christ, it matters. Even if that person doesn't respond in that moment, it plants a seed. It plants a seed that will grow. And somebody else might come along. Yeah, somebody else might come along and share another seed. And somebody else might come along and water it a little and say, hey, did you ever hear, you know what happened to me? I gave, I heard about this Jesus and changed my life. And then another person come along and like a grandmother or something says, hey, I've been praying for you. And then another person comes along. And before, you might have only been one of those waterers or those seed planters, but God used you. And what you do in presenting Jesus to others matters. It matters. It matters. There are a lot of things in this life that we do that don't matter. But this is not one of them. This matters. Amen. Preaching the good news of Jesus Christ matters to a generation that has never even heard about Jesus. Do you know you have neighbors in your neighborhood that have never even heard the story of Jesus Christ? They've heard maybe about him. They know about maybe Christmas or Easter or something going on. Or they heard him as a cuss word. But they've never heard the gospel story. They've never really heard the true story of what really happened and how, why he came to earth and why he had to die on the cross for us. They never had, they've never heard it. So many people in America now don't even know the real story. It's extremely convoluted. And here we are, sitting in Believer's Chapel with the truth of God on our laps, on our phones. Do not hide this. When we share it, it matters. I'm gonna go on, but I wanna pray for this because I feel like this is, this is a, um, a moment here that God wants to do something here. So would you just close your eyes for a second? I wanna pray for you over these things that matter, and then we'll move on. God, I thank you. God, that you have empowered and equipped all of us enough to do these five things that matter. God, we don't have to have a doctorate. We don't have to be a theologian. 
We don't have to be a pastor. We don't have to be on a staff somewhere. God, we have your word that resides in us. We have your spirit that lives and breathes in us. God, we have your word that is powerful. God, I pray that we would not hide it, but that, God, we would start to live for things that matter. God, even forgive us for doing all the things and wasting all of our time on things that don't matter. God, help us to do something every day that matters. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, as a church, we are going to do something that matters. Over the next few weeks, and I, I, I shared about it last week, the vision that we have, uh, the legacy initiative that we are launching into, even starting last week, and, and really coming to a culmination at the end last Sunday of this month. We are going to do something as a church that really matters. We're grateful for the legacy and the people that have built this legacy that we stand in today. The stage of, that, I, that I preach on right now has been built from people that have given to this place and have done amazing things. Some of them are here in this room today. And I'm so grateful for them. And now God has called us to keep moving and keep doing things that matter. And what does that look like in 2024? And so we, we have identified, right, three things that we believe that matter, that we can do even right now, right? I'm gonna go over those again. Number one, we believe that reaching kids and their families matter, right? When we can reach young people uh, and share the good news of Jesus Christ and how he loves them, and they can start to find their identity in Christ, not their identity in some other <laughs> Uh, government-issued or media-issued or college-issued agenda, but that we can share what Jesus says to these children about who they are, that they are king's kids, that Jesus loves them, that Jesus has a plan and purpose for their lives. It matters, right? When your children grow up knowing that God loves them, more than anybody, and that God created them, and he has a way, and his way is better than the world's ways, it matters, right? And so as a church, we are going to be uh, persistent in reaching young people, young children and teenagers and uh, adolescents so that they could come to know Jesus uh, before they get on a really bad trajectory in another direction, right? And so we have plans to build a, uh, to transform our gymnasium area and the hallways down there into a kids' worship center where kids can experience the presence of God and hear the word of God preached how they need it preached to them so they can understand about God's love for them, right? And we're gonna build a playground for them too so that they'll wanna come, <laughs> right? <laughs> and they'll have some energy to get their energy out uh, in the winter months. Number one, we're, we're gonna do as a church is we're going to reach kids and their families because it matters. Number two, we as a church are going to help with a mental health crisis in this community. This is an unjust situation going on in our community and in this country right now with depression and anxiety and the suicide rates uh, higher than they've ever been in 2023, higher than ever. Somebody needs to do something about it. The government's trying even McMahon and his state of the county address said, I'll give millions of dollars to help this mental health crisis going on in our community. And they're trying, they're trying and trying, but Jesus has the best way to help the mental health crisis is in individual's ways. And we as a church have got to do something that matters against injustice. And this matters, right? And so as you know, I shared it last week, and I just want to give, give you a little more clarification on this, that we have a, a good handful, a little bit more than that, of professional uh, people that are involved in uh, school psych uh, psychiatry, in um, uh, a psychiatric nurse practitioner, other therapists, all these, all these professionals. And together, they're coming together to come up with a plan of raising up people that will be able to provide counseling for people in this area that need help. Amen? 
It is not built yet, but we are in the process of building that and building a counseling center. And by the way, this was the dream of our founding pastor, Pastor Paul Wagner, who had not been able to start, ever see this come to fruition, but we will see it come to fruition. Amen? In a very short, in a very short future. In a very short future. Uh, and then third, three but not least, um, we are going to see souls come into the kingdom of God more and more and more. And so we want to continue to use this amazing building, build on this place, this room even, continue to grow what we're doing in this place. Do you know over 22 to 23, our church has grown by 50 people on average, uh, on an average weekend. Isn't it amazing? Just in one year. And this Easter, we had, uh, this Easter compared to last Easter, we had more than 100 people more than we had last Easter. And so God is using this place uh, and we've had, uh, I can't even, like, I think already this year, it's close, I don't, don't quote me on this, but it's close to 50 people give their lives to Jesus Christ already this year. Isn't that awesome? It's awesome. I don't have those exact numbers. I should have had them. But um, forgive me. I'll get them for you another time. Um, but it's, it's many people. The point is, many people are coming to know Jesus. And in this place, we want to continue to foster a good environment, to continue to uh, treat this room, and, and as people come in uh, with uh, helping them to come to find Jesus in a place uh, that will be state-of-the-art, first class, amen? And so these are the things that we're doing as a church over the next few years. We need to do something that matters. These are all things that matter. We aren't here just to soak in the things that have been, been done already for us from the previous generations. As thankful as I am for the previous generations, I think they would be upset, and some of them are here, would be upset for us if we didn't do anything with what they've given us. Right, Dave? I think they'd be really disappointed if we just sat here and say, you know what, thank God that we have this church built. We could just stay in here and just worship Jesus together, which is really a good thing, and just preach to each other and uh, prophesy to each other over and over and over again, and let's just close the world out, and it doesn't really matter because it, it, whatever, right? No. God has called us to continue to make a difference, to do something that matters, and souls matter. Fighting against injustice matters. Building the kingdom of God matters. Giving matters. And our relationship with Jesus Christ matters. And so I'm asking everyone in this place, as we embark on this journey, the beginning stages of this journey, uh, to go on this journey with us. Full participation. We want everybody in this room knowing that each of us make a difference, whether it's in our serving, whether it's in our giving, whether it's our, uh, our praying. All of us need to come together. God says when we come together in unity, there's nothing that he won't do. When we come together as one. When we come together. I want you to pray. God, how would you have me to give to this campaign? How would you have me to uh, be involved in this campaign? How would you have me involved in this legacy? Before I close, I wanna share a video with you. You guys ready? Check out this video. These are roughly 28,835 jelly beans. I counted out 500 of them and used those to weigh the rest. In this pile, there's one jelly bean for each day that the average American will live. You might have more beans in your life, or maybe less, but on average, this is the time we have. Here's a single bean. It's your very first day. A special day, but kind of a rough day on everyone involved. Add 364 more and you have the first year of your life. Now, for a sense of scale, here are your first 15 years, 5,475 days, which brings us to the threshold of adulthood. And at that moment, this is the time that we have left. And this is, on average, what we will do with all that time. We will be asleep for a total of 8,477 days. If we're lucky, some of that time we'll be sleeping next to someone we love. We will be in the process of eating, drinking, or preparing food for 1,635 days. We'll be at work, hopefully doing something satisfying, for the equivalent of 3,202 of those days. 1,099 days will be spent commuting or traveling from one place to another. Maybe a little bit more if you live in LA. 
On average, we will watch television in one form or another for a total of 2,676 days. Household activities, like chores and tending to our pets and shopping, will take another 1,576 days, and we will care for the needs and well-being of others, our friends and family, for 564 days. We'll spend 671 days bathing, grooming, and doing all other bathroom-related activities, and another 720 days will go to community activities, like religious and civic duties, charities, and taking classes. After we remove all those beans, this is what remains. This is the time that we have left. Time for laughing, swimming, making art, going on hikes, text messages, reading, checking Facebook, playing softball, maybe even teaching yourself how to play the guitar. So what are you going to do with this time? How much of it do you think you've already used up? If you only had half of it, what would you do differently? What about half of that? How much time have you already spent worrying? instead of doing something that you love. What if you just had one more day? What are you going to do today? Every day matters. Jesus says, do not store for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Come on, guys. It's time for us to make a difference. We only have so many days on this planet. We have the opportunity to come together as a church to do something that really, really matters. It matters to our children and to their families. It's gonna matter to the people that are struggling with all kind of mental health problems. It's gonna matter to those that don't know Jesus, that are far from him. And I'm asking again for us as a church to come together, to pray about this, to get involved with doing something that makes a difference to get involved in giving above and beyond what we've ever given before as a church so that we can launch into what God wants to do in and through this place. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? God, we're grateful that we get to be part of your kingdom. We're grateful that somebody shared with us this message of Jesus Christ. We're grateful that we responded and God, now we're thankful for the opportunity that we have to do something with our lives that actually matters. All of us in this place could admit and even be sorry for so many things that we've done that don't matter. We spend a lot of our day, every day, doing things that don't really matter. But God, I'm asking that you would help us to now, every day that we live, do something that does matter. God, that we would take advantage of the opportunities that we have to get to know you better. That we take advantage of the times that we have to build your kingdom by serving or being involved in a crew or helping somebody else. God, that we do something that matters by our giving of our resources, of our finances. God, that we do make a difference and do something that matters by building your kingdom and definitely by reaching other people with the good news of Jesus Christ. We're asking your help on this. In Jesus' name. If you're here today and maybe you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, today we want to give you that opportunity. This would be the greatest thing that you will ever do and the thing that matters most is that you will go from a relationship without Jesus, or ha not having a relationship with Jesus, to having a relationship with your creator that loves you, that wants to know you, and that gave his life for you. So with everybody's eyes closed and heads bowed, if you're here today, you say, that's me, I need to get things right with Jesus, I need to have a personal relationship with him, with your eyes closed and heads bowed, if that's you, would you just lift your hand high enough so I can see it, see your hand, see your hand. Anybody else? I need to get 
things right with Jesus today. I need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Come on, I want you everybody to say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it out loud. Say, Lord Jesus. I ask that you forgive me for living my life for myself, for living my life for others, for being separate from you. But today, I believe that you died on the cross to take my place for all those things I've done wrong. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your salvation. I ask that you come into my life and help me to have a relationship with you for as long as I live. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's give it up for those that just did that in this place today. As you leave today, Cindy put together for us little packs of jelly beans. And um, make sure you grab one. And what I want you to do, try not to eat them. That's a whole day. I'm just kidding. Take these jelly beans and put them somewhere. On your counter, your nightstand, wherever. And let them be a reminder that today, you're going to make a difference. And then when you wake up tomorrow, let this jelly bean remind you that this is another day that God has given me the opportunity to make a difference. Do something with today. We only have so many. Amen? Get these jelly beans. Don't eat them. And also, if you have questions about our legacy initiative, our legacy campaign, we have these booklets. I handed them, we handed them out to you last week after service. They are, they are available at our connections table out in the, out in the lobby. Please get one if you didn't get it. It explains a lot more. Even has some cool pictures in here of the uh, kids center that we're going to build. Um, we'd love for you to see this. Grab one on your way out. Would you stand to your feet? We're going to worship Jesus one more time before we.